And I decided to see how deep the rabbit hole went. And so I continued studying. And pretty soon, I started coming to interesting conclusions. And some of them are contrary to popular belief. If, if reliable prediction exists, if somebody out there has a source of information that is actually able to tell us accurately what the future is going to be like, that's very important. Because it says a lot of things about the existence of the world, of, of how things operate. When I was studying, I came across an idea called absolute truth. Now, that's vodka, <laughs> but um, absolute truth, let's play on words, you guys. Absolute truth is the idea that there's only one way that everything happens. There's different interpretations of how that's happening, yes, but that there's only one stream that happens from the beginning to the end. And so to illustrate this idea a little bit more clearly, here's the idea. Now, this red book, uh, it does not represent the Bible, so you know. But it's a hypothetical book. It's called the Book of Omniscience, which means the book of all knowledge. Let's say, and I'm not going to assert how the world began right now, but let's say on day one of the world beginning that a page was written about it. And not just, not just like a general page, but this is a, a big page full of detail. So every event and every life, every plant, its lifespan, has, every plant has its own biography. Every ham, your, your pet hamster has its own biography in this book. And every detail ever is recorded sequentially from the beginning to the end. And then let's say the end happens, and it's on page 10 times 10 to the 58th power, which means the book is really thick. It goes around the world three times. Uh, with its spine maybe laying against the world so you can get to the pages easier. So it has everything in it, all of the knowledge, and it is one way. Now, what if somebody had made a time machine or something, or somehow knew the future, they took that book and brought it back in time to us right now? The part that I personally would most desire to look at would be tomorrow or the day after that because then I could become rich very fast, or I could know that the world was going to end, or I could know when my cat, Penny, is going to die. Maybe I wouldn't want to know that. Or I could know which one of my friends is getting a divorce, or I could know which one of, um, you know, I could know anything, because I could turn forward in the pages, and, oh, here's when time machines are built, or whatever, you know. But the point is that it all happened one way, that there's an absolute true way that it all happened, even if people aren't looking for how it actually happened. Now, there are lots of people who are looking for how it happened. It's our privilege to try to find what the truth is, right? This next thought is going to take a little bit of thought. Um, so I found this picture for you guys because I thought it was appropriate. Put on your thinking caps. It's a difficult thought. We cannot know the future without the existence of absolute truth. And what that means is that if things happen in different ways as we move through time, if there are parallel universes, if you decide one thing and then like simultaneously you decide something else and then the world splits and it keeps going like that, then we can't know the future because which one of those paths are we in? And is there, is, there, is there that book of omniscience that exists in all those worlds? It would have to be different for each one. I know this is hard to imagine. So. But without the presence of absolute truth, we can't actually know what the future is. Okay. There are a growing number of cultures a growing number of religions, science, and disciplines that are claiming not only that they know absolutely what happened in the past, 
And you've heard these claims, but also that they know what's going to happen in the future. Now, they don't have this book, so it has to come from somewhere. Sometimes it's different, uh, like projecting patterns or because they have encountered somebody who says they know and they trust that person. We're going to be looking specifically at all of these different sources of prophecy tomorrow. There's two meetings tomorrow in the morning. The second one, we're going to be talking about every source of prophecy that there is. Visions, we're going to be talking about fortune telling. We're going to be talking about uh, Bible prophets. We're going to be talking about Muhammad and everybody who says, I know what's going to happen in the future. And we're going to look at their track record and see if they really have any reputability, if, if, if we should be listening to them at all. This is part of the rabbit hole that I began to dig through, and I want to encourage you guys to continue with me, because um, I'm going to share it with you. All you have to do is sit there, but it's very valuable, so I encourage you to come. Uh, a growing number of cultures and religions are saying that they have the truth, and so let's let them give us a shot. Let's let them say, I, I know the truth, we'll listen to them, and if they absolutely don't, then we're going to ignore them, or I'm going to ignore them. You're all allowed to make your own choices. Also, growing is the proof that they don't. I should have put that slide up there a second ago. <clears throat> um, as far as the Mayan 2012 prophecy is concerned, this is the tablet of Palanik. He was a king. Uh, or actually, uh, he lived in Palanik. His name was Pakal. It was created in March 24, 603. Thank you, Mayans, for always dating the things that you made. Um, and it happened to be in the 1.0.0.0.0.85 Lamat, one mole, which translates in English to October 21. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, it, it, there's a prophecy on here. Sorry. It translates into October 21, 4,772 A.D., which is almost 3,000 years in the future. The king, Pakal of Palanik, predicted that on this date, the 18th calendar round anniversary, that's the Bakhtun that we're talking about earlier, of his ascension will be celebrated. He did not believe that the world would end in 2012. This is what I'm trying to tell you is the Mayans themselves did not believe that the world was going to end in 2012. Who is saying the world is going to end in 2012? Come tomorrow, and we will look at exactly who that is and why they say that the Mayans have this information. Uh, what about the other things that are going to be happening around 2012? Are those things significant? Do they add credibility to whoever is saying that the, year, uh, the world's going to end in 2012? There are solar storms that are going to be happening that year. They could be devastating. There is a planetary alignment. Earth and Sol and the Milky Way galaxy intersect each other. If you were standing way back and looking at Earth from a long ways off, they would go whoop, and then pass each other um, at exactly that time. That's where the Mayans placed their little marker for keeping track of time because they knew that was going to be happening because they were ingenious. But um, there was a much more significant alignment, astronomically speaking, a few years ago when Venus and Jupiter and Saturn and Mars and Mercury and the Sun all lined up at the same time. Astrologists went crazy. You might remember, I don't know. And they said, this is going to be, this is an omen, something very special. And science, when they look at the same event, I'm asking you to be a little bit skeptical. When science looks at the same event, they say, what actually, is the, what actually happens on Earth when that happens? Things do happen that are out of the ordinary. Sometimes it's self-fulfilling prophecy. Like people say, something's happening up there. Something's got to happen down here. My grandma, Grandma Ferguson. I hope she's not watching this. Well, actually, you can watch this. Yeah, that's, that's okay if you watch this. She's still alive. Um, she is a little bit superstitious. And uh, she was in an accident one year. And she decided not to leave the house the next year because that day probably was something significant in her life and that she needed to stay in the house. Otherwise, she might get another accident, something else horrible might happen, so she stayed inside. 
And I believe that there are several days like this. She's superstitious. Um, and so those kind of things, things do happen, happen on Earth 